All right, guys, welcome to Feeper's Electric Tower. My name is JJ, and with me is the one and only, the one who hosted this tournament. It's going to be Peeper. What's up? Hey, what's going on, man? Happy to be here. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I'm happy to be here. Thank you for inviting me. But of course, let's skip the introductions and get, get over into the team. In this side, we're currently viewing from Silver's perspective going against Ex sir explain a lot and we have here wheezing incineroar dragonite uh we also have the uh feeny here regigigas and what do you think about it and what do you think about explain a lot's team as well so one thing that explain a lot has going for him in this matchup is he does have two really strong uh trick room options with the stack mm -hmm. attacker that can set it up for itself and then of course a good dynamax right. option in that format as well as glass year and he has um, follow me from the Clefairy, so he can get that up pretty reliably. Of course, Silver does have the classic Regigigas Weezing co combo, which could really, really prove mm -hmm. a problem. It matches up really well in the Spectre because you can't max ghost the Regigigas. Of course, Gigas can't strike it back, but with a Spadef boost coming out from Max Quake, it could be a big problem for the Spectre. Right, but with that being said, here we have it, the first round of the tournament and the first game. Let's have a champion time. In this section, Explainer is going to bring out the Spectre here and the Shifu, and let's see what Silver is going to bring out for us. It's going to be, as he said, the Regigigas and the Weezing. You know, what's really interesting about this is that it has been, you know, since the start of the first season, uh, of, of seri Series 1, rather, that a lot of people have already been theorizing with Weezing going with the Regigigas, and right now with Series 7, we are seeing it. It's honestly pretty pretty cool to see. I mean, Regigigas is a Pokemon that a lot of people really like, but it's never really been able to sort of see the daylight because of its ability. But of course, Weezing with that neutralizing gas is able to turn that ability off. But one thing that's very, very important is it also turns off the Unseen Fist from Urshifu, meaning it can actually protect mm -hmm. in front of it, meaning it's, it, it's honestly really safe in this position. Right. You know, with that neutralizing gas, it's not a good way to, like, use it. You know, for, you know, at least for the previous series, but now that there's someone who can actually utilize that, then we are going to see it go with the side of the light of the day. But right now, look at this. Explain a lot. Going to immediately have the first initial... Well, it's the first and initial? Wow. Initial move <laughs> of the Dynamax going for the Spectrator and, of course... Is going to answer back. Silver is going to be answering back with a Dynamax of his own. I think this is going to be... Yes, it is going to be the Regigigas without the slow start as well. Thanks to the neutralizing gas. And let's see which attack is going to go first. And which attack is potentially going to KO which Pokemon. And let's see. It is Weezing, of course, going to immediately go for the Protect. And as you mentioned, Unseen, Un Unseen Fist, rather won't do anything at all but look at this first dynamax move going to go with the wheezing of course could it be able to protect itself and gets a bit of damage and look at this right now defense goes down of course and of course with the life orb going to be able to get in some recoil but look at that max strike going to be able to want to ko that or shifu this is looking good for silver right now Another big thing is that speed drop. Spectre is a fast Pokemon, but it typically likes to be, you know, running that modest nature and not boosting its speed another stage. So Regigigas should be able to outspeed it in his next turn. And we did see that has max darkness. So Spectre is kind of in an awkward spot here, to be honest. Right. I mean, as you mentioned, Spectre wants, usually wants to go fast, especially with that Regilecki uh, from the back as well. You can definitely see that uh, X... Uh, explain a lot rather i keep on saying it's sort of explain a lot but like explain a lot's team you know is basically one of the typical teams that are fast but with that with that debuff coming in from the max strike is going to be hurting a lot Ooh, double protect actually gets it that's kind of big uh, double, like, it's, it's, it's something that you don't see every day but look at that the screens is now out let's see max quake Definitely not going to do a lot of damage now, thanks to the uh, thanks to the reflect. But Regilecki <laughs> barely surviving, <laughs> leaving think, yeah, with just one bonus, HP, bro. I, that's even through a reflect. I mean, Regigig is like you just honestly can't. You put a life orb on it, you really can't underestimate its damage output. Even with a reflect up, right? It's just 
honestly insane. And that, that Spadef boost is honestly is really going to come in, you know, huge. And Weezing with that second protect is able to soak up that Max Quake from the opposing side quite nicely. It's just really interesting. It was like uh, this Weezing right here is basically the MVP of the game that I'm seeing right now so far. So far for me, Weezing is the MVP of the game. Uh, letting Regigigas just do its own thing against explain a lot. You know, one thing that you're going to see often is if you are playing against a Weezing Gigas combo, you kind of have to target down the Weezing because once you disable that neutralizing gas, Gigas isn't as big a deal. But the problem is, right. you know, if you get those double protects or if you have a focus sash <laughs> or, you know, it, it just, the luck doesn't go your way. I mean, it, it can really snowball really quickly because you're staring down a Dynamax Reggie Gigas. Right, but look at this. Max Quake is going to be able to take down that Weezing. As you've mentioned, Slow Start is going to be activated now thanks to that knockout. No more neutralizing gas. Spectre gets its own ability. Everyone gets its own ability right now. <laughs> and look at that. Slow Start going to be a huge damage. Sorry, not a huge damage, but a huge deal for the side of Silver. Now, even with the minus one, even with the minus one in the Spectre, it's not going to be enough to outspeed that Spectre, mm -hmm. but look at that right now, not going to do a lot of damage, although it's half health. But I mean, you know, we have a debuff as well, a lower speed death as well. I mean, at this point, Regigigas, I don't think, e even with that kind of debuff, it's not going to do a lot right now, you know? Yeah, once Slow Start is activated, it cuts its attack in half. It's really, it's honestly pretty pretty sad to be a Regigigas player when your Slow Start is, is active. <laughs> Incineroar is right. going to hit the field, though. That Intimidate, ah, not going to do too much against those two special attackers, but he does have Fake Out Pressure, which could pick up a KO onto this Regilecki, potentially. Kind of swing things back in Silver's favor. It does feel like he's lost a little bit of momentum with right. that last turn. Right, interesting, interesting. But look at this right now. As you mentioned, Incineroar here ha could have had the, you know, the Fake Out here just for to go for the Regilecki, but like at the same time, it seems like it's way too obvious that Mm -hmm. You know, uh, explain a lot here could just like change to his like last Pokemon to just save Reggie Leggett, but like at the same time, why would you save Reggie Leggett at this point? It is still the fastest thing on the field. I mean, it could offer really good speed control with the uh, Electro Web. Mm -hmm. It's also, I mean, at one HP, it doesn't have a great matchup in the Tapu Fini, but if you get some chip onto it, it, it could prove vital mm -hmm. against that. But we will see the fake out come out as Spectre protects itself, and that will be the end of Reggie Leggett for this round. Right, and look at that. He may have outsmarted Silver, <laughs> but Silver outsmarted his outsmarting. And look at that. He he decided to just skip this spec here and not switch out that Regia Leki. As I mentioned earlier on, um, you know, Regia Leki is still the fastest Pokemon at the field before. And, you know, having it at the back then, maybe he could get in. He's definitely going to win the speed control and maybe got gets a win off of that but like it's not gonna happen anymore since it's now taken out but look at this right now huh stakataka <laughs> yeah. and spectre going against reggie gigas and incinerator yeah i mean going from the fastest pokemon in the format to i think the slowest pokemon in the format from playing this <laughs> right? side of the field but it does have a really good matchup into incinerator it can body press so it can kind of just ignore intimidates and party shots uh, of course, it can also rock slide. That's a pretty common mood. move from stack attack and going for those flinches. Or, I mean, if it gets a trick room up and then it can move first every turn, that's going to be a pretty big problem for, for Silver. Right, but look at this right now. Darkest Laria going to be able to take down the Spectre, of course. Oh, man, this is looking pretty bad for X. Uh Wow, I, I always <laughs> want to say, sir, explain a lot. It's just I mean, explain I a lot. I, I think he'd appreciate it, sir. I think I'd sort of explain a lot. <laughs> <laughs> well, anyway, he's down to his last Pokemon. Silver here still has his three Pokemon up. And mm -hmm. I think this is pretty much game for uh, explain a lot here. Yeah, it does look like this first game of this best of three will go to Silver. Unless, I mean... He gets like a million, like he gets trick room up and gets, so, just so, gets a rock slide <laughs> flinches like over and over again. I, I mean, that's kind of his only way to right. win at this point. And there we have it. Gyro Ball not to do a lot of damage, of course, against the Regigigas. But, you know, even if he's going to be able to like to take down the Regigigas, he still has like a third Pokemon. His last Pokemon up the back. But look at that. 
it is going to be Silver's first win. Of course, that was pretty obvious. That was like a three to one situation, and I don't think anyone could like get a comeback over that unless unless the RNG gods gets to their side. <laughs> Yeah, I'm a little surprised to see Explain A Lot not go for a Trick Room on the stack attacka and just gyro ball the Regigigas. You know, that move does do more power the slower the Pokemon is against its target, but with a slow start Regigigas, it's going to lose a lot of its base power. So that's a little bit of an interesting... Of course, it, it might not have Trick Room, so maybe that's the the sort of the philosophy there, but I think the biggest problem right. coming out from Explain A Lot's side was losing Urshifu turn one. I mean, it, it literally did nothing. Right. It didn't... It couldn't detect. It didn't sucker punch. You know, we don't know if it's banded or or what the, the item is on it. I mean, it's obviously not Focus Sash, but losing losing the Urshifu tier, uh, turn one against the Regigigas and then also giving the speed control over to Silver's side of the field on that first turn really, really put Explain a Lot on the back foot for, honestly, the entire game. Mm-hmm. And I mean, at the same time, you know, having that neutralizing gas is really a huge deal for Explain a Lot here. Removing that unseen fist, of course, that that's like one of the main reasons why you would want an Urshifu on your team. You know, mm -hmm. uh, you know, just by passing protect or like detect or whatever, and having that removed from you basically removes fifty percent of the game of Urshifu. It really does. One thing that Urshifu does extremely, extremely well is if you can keep him in the back and sort of he can honestly just be basically a complete win con in the in the late game if you can knock right. out a Pokemon or two and then just have Urshifu in the back and then just be like, well, you can't protect in front of me anymore, so I'm just going to click Wicked Bro Blow or Surging Strikes and just crit you all day or close combat. And like, you can't do anything about this. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? So taking yeah. that off the field turn one, I, I really can't stress how just that was a monumental very impactful. that really was. Yeah. And at this point, explain a lot is definitely going to take a lot of time. And mm -hmm. you can't you can't blame him for that, especially with what happened with the first round. But right now, it is going to be the second game. Explain a lot versus Silver. Let's have a champion time, and let's see if Explain a lot here is going to change his uh, starting Pokemon, and if Silver is going to change his as well. But look at this right now, Spectre and Reggie Lucky is going to be the first one for Explain a lot side here, and Dragonite and Incineroar is going to be the one for Silver. I really like this adaptation from Explain a Lot. I think Regilecki needed to be, especially since it has Focus Sash, it needed to be in, you know, as a as a lead because last game he could have Electro Webbed to then sort of, you know, continue to keep the uh, the speed up on his side of the field. But I think Silver also made a pretty interesting adap adaptation, saying, okay, you know, I think you're going to lead to beat uh, Gigas and Weezing, so I'm going to lead something against that and kind of throw you off your game, put right. you, you know, put you off of your off of your game plan. But this is something really interesting as well, you know, and I mentioned this earlier too, you know, like, so, explain a lot here, things that he outsmarted Silver, but Silver just outsmarts him <laughs> by way beyond, my friend. But look at this right now, Reggie Lucky and Spectre, right? As you mentioned, he might have wanted, he might have wanted to like, you know, play over his game, you know, but like, Silver here goes for the Max Quake, going to the Reggie Alecki and the and the fake out as well, removing the focus sash, essentially. And that could potentially be a wanted KO for the side of explain a lot. But look at this right now, Spectre is going to be like the first Dynamax once again, just like the first game for the side of Explain a Lot. And of course it's gonna be answered back by the Dragonite of Silver. Do you think this is going to be a first turn KO for uh, Regilecki? It could be. It really depends on if Regilecki has Protect or not, but if Silver isn't careful, I mean, he could lose his Incineroar this turn, potentially, coming out from a Max Quake from Spectre. We are going to see the Fake Out connect, though. That's going to... Is that a crit? Ooh, that's Ooh, a juicy crit. A crit as well. <laughs> <laughs> and definitely, we won't be seeing that Reggie Alecki survive anytime soon. But as you mentioned, we are going to potentially see Ooh. the knockout on the Incineroar, but not quite enough. Still hangs on by a tread with that red hell. But of course, the Spadef raising up by that Max Quake. But look at this right now. Max Quake is going to go up after this berry from the Incineroar just to recover a little bit of health with the Secret Berry. But of course, Max Quake is going to be able to take down that Regieleki and turn number one. And immediately, it seems as if 
it is just a repeat of the history of round one. I was I was literally just about to say that. You know, Silver picks up another KO in the first round off of off of his first turn of Dynamax, which is really huge. I mean, we see both both players Dynamax turn one. We see them both go for Max Quakes turn mm -hmm. one. Uh, oh, Clefairy is going to come out though. This actually could be a pretty big problem for Silver. Redirection is not something he wants to deal with with a Spectre. Right. And you have to also consider the fact that it has friend guard, or, or at least, you know, potentially has friend guard, and Spectre already has the plus one on Spideth. Mm hmm. We are going to see the Clefairy of Silvers come out into the field. So we have many plink <laughs> big blobs out on the, on the field right now, <laughs> dancing around. Right. And there we have it. Max Phantasm going into the Dragonite. Is it going to do a lot of damage? Not quite enough. Not even help. Maybe just around like 25% of the health. But of course, the defense is now going down. Going to do a lot of damage. Going to be a lot of deal for the side of Silver here. But look at this. Max Airstream trying to get the speed control. But of course, you have to consider the fact that even if he has a speed control, Spectre already has plus one in speed deck. And then he also has the friend guard. Even if he gets all the, uh, even if he gets all the buffs that he could, it's still not going to be enough to deal out of damage unless you have like you know plus four or like plus five or six. You know what I'm saying? Mm hmm. I do. I think, I think that ooh, protect coming out. I like that play from ooh. Explain a lot, saying you know, I'm not going to let you take out because that that airstream is a two hit KO. But now Dragonite does move first. We'll get another Spadef boost, and we did see Silver lock into that. Life do, which isn't a move we see too too often on Clefairy, but no matter what mm -hmm. happens, any damage that Spectre does this turn is going to get healed right back up. Right, and look at this, Max Phantasm. I think it's not going to be going to be Ooh, able to take another down crit? the Dragonite, and again the Life do <laughs> just going to be able to <laughs> recover that. And you know what's really interesting about this is that Silver just maintains Dragonite to be the fastest Pokemon, maintains Dragonite to be the bulkiest Pokemon, and maintains it just to be the core of the team of this game. Dragonite is a Pokemon that we really haven't seen too much of in Series 7. It, we've seen some, like, comfy, multi-scale weakness policy things, but, you know, that that's very, you know, weak to redirection and stuff, so it's kind of not really found its footing, but Silver's, Silver's mm -hmm. shown that it's, you know, it's got more than... Got more than people think. Right. I mean, especially now that he's using Dragonite and showing us literally how Dragonite <laughs> could be good in Series 7. Because, like, as you mentioned, it's always it's always this Incineroar, always a Tapafini, Glacier, Rillaboom. But, like, seeing the Dragonite being on play is something you don't see every day. But look at this right now. Redirection. Well, definitely going to do a lot, but look at that. Dual Wing Big going to do a lot of damage with this pack here. But look at that. Shadow Ball, I think, is going to be able to knock out the Dragon. I know, never mind. It is going to be for the uh, uh, Cliff Fairy, thanks to the redirection. But one more Dual Wing Bit. Wing, wing Bit is going to be <laughs> able to take down either the Cliff Fairy and the Spectre. Both Pokemon are kind of just easy prey for Dragonite right now. And... That Spadef boost is coming in really, really big for that Clefairy. Being able to live a helping hand Shadow Ball from Spectre, which is a pretty offensive Pokemon even without a boost. Right. But look at that dual wing bait. It's going to be protected by Spectre. And life is coming out. I'm not real lot here. Um Well just so that Silver is going to like make Clefairy survive, you know, prolonging that effect of the friend guard. Um, going in for the Moon Blast, I think this is going to be able to take down. No, not quite enough. Quite shocking. It is a super effective move, but again, those those special defense boots are really coming in handy for for Silver right now, and it's got to be honestly pretty frustrating to play against this Life Duke Clefairy. It's it's again, it's not something we see very often, but. It is something that, you know, you do kind of have to respect. I think I think Silver's just kind of stalling All out right. really, really the hard Max right Quake. now. Yeah. So we right, the, the Max Quake. I, I forgot. I honestly forgot because, like, <laughs> especially with the first turn that we got, like, the repeat of the history. But look at this right now. Dual Wing Beat is still not going to be able to take down the Fury, but just almost, almost going to be able to take it down. And just one more hit, I think. He's, well, definitely going to be able to, like, you know, remove that friend guard and just 
eat everyone alive from the side of silver look at it right now live to prolonging that the fairy to prolong the effects of that oh wow prolonging the oh. effects of that friend card but like going for the earthquake this turn he does not want a single target to go down he wants both of them to go down the fairy i think is going to go in for i think it would have been well best to go for the protect but follow me ain't gonna do nothing with earthquake <laughs> ain't gonna do nothing with earthquake that is for sure there should be a double double ko yep I, the crit on the Clefairy definitely didn't matter, but that's honestly a really good play. I was kind of wondering what Silver was going for with targeting Clefairy and then targeting Spectrier and then targeting Clefairy again. But he right. was just trying to get them low enough where he could just say, hey, I don't care about your redirection. I don't care about following me. I got Earthquake. <laughs> and I'm just going to keep clicking Life Do. <laughs> right. And I was actually kind of dumbfounded as to what was happening as well. I, I, you know, I, I was I was the same as you, dude. Like, okay, <laughs> you're using dual wing bait to both of his Pokemon, but you aren't just like, you know, uh, you aren't trying to target one. You're, you're not trying to KO just one. But the end game was the Earthquake, and that was really, really amazing. But look at this right now. Follow me just to Bulky, uh, j just to get all the damage from the Earth Shifu and let mm. Dragonite just get it, but like, Oh my Ooh, god, poison that jab. whiff though. That's oh actually my a god, big that is deal. huge. Yeah, that's I a think, big uh, deal. Yeah, that is huge. That is huge, bro. Like, if that hit, then definitely he would have been get he would have he would have got the kill uh the KO off of that or Shifu. But like Incineroar, even even with the fake out, I think if Urshifu has the protect here, he could still survive this from three to one situation. It is. It depends on how much. I mean, if Silver misses on a dual wing beat, I think that that may steal it up. Although I do think he has Taco Fiend in the back, so you know Urshifu is not going to appreciate a oh, right, right, right. moon blast. But you know, a crit's a crit, and if this is <laughs> well, if it's banded, it's going to be poison jabby. But then again, I mean, a, a banded poison jab is not a Taco Fiend is not going to appreciate that. And since it didn't detect, I right. think it is banded. And oh. Urshifu. Oh, not gonna do, do a KO as well. <laughs> Look at that. Wow, Urshifu is That is a... quite the bulky Urshifu. I know. I don't think it's gonna matter now because he could, you know, Silver can just attack, right. and I think it is banded, and Dragon Claw's not gonna miss. But I, I, I mean, I know Urshifu's got like some defense, but I'm a little surprised. I'm not gonna not lie. this much. I know. That was. <laughs> That was, a, that was a bulky Urshifu. And especially that it's a it's it's a it's a it's a, it's a super effective move, you know. Yeah. But hey, that is it for our first round of the tournament. The electric, electric tire, bro. Like, how do you how do you think about the first round of uh, our tournament? Well, I I do think it was quite electrifying, if I do do say so myself. <laughs> Uh, we did see one electric type Pokemon. We didn't see any electric type moves though, which is unfortunate. <laughs> Not yet. Uh, I should have made that a requirement. You have to have one electric type Pokemon, but <laughs> um, I think that the was... electric tower. Are you, are you all gonna use like grass type Pokemon? What's up, bro? <laughs> yeah. We just all use all use ground types in the electric tower. That's how we do it. <laughs> but I think that was a great first game. You know, Silver is able to pick up a pretty pretty solid and you know consistent, well played two zero there over explain a lot. I think. Right. Just again, both games being able to pick up a Pokemon turn one with his Dynamax and explain a lot, not really being able to do the same thing, really, really just swung the momentum in, in Silver's favor both times. Right. And you know what? What I, Before we just like head into the, like, the next game, I just wanted to say that Silver was, as you mentioned, pretty consistent and his 2 0 was very convincing, knowing that. You know, not only was he able to do the same thing from round one, which is, you know, kind of really hard to do, you know, uh, especially if it's like the first time you're playing your opponent and to be able to read your opponent like that and to be able to bounce back from your mistake is something that a very experienced player could only do. Silver is actually a pretty decent friend of mine, and I, I do know that he has definitely got some games under his belt. Um, Him and I, you know, we, we've prepped for games together and and things like that. So right. I, I know that he is a fairly well experienced player. I do know that Dragonite is one of his favorite Pokemon, and Regilecki is not one of his favorite Pokemon. So I'm sure KOing that in both games felt pretty good <laughs> for him. 
All right. But yeah, that is it for our first round of the Electric Tower Tournament by Fever. And we will see you guys on the next round.